Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about how I won Senior Airman Below the Zone, also known as BTZ. So Senior Airman Below the Zone is a promotion or an award that you can win six months before you would normally rank up to an E4 or Senior Airman. So I've been active duty Air Force for almost two years. It'll be two years in December. So if you're in the Air Force long enough or you're in E3 long enough, you will naturally rank up to an E4. There is not a test that you have to pass like you do for an E5 or a Staff Sergeant. So everyone, for the most part, eventually makes Senior Airman. The whole point of BTZ is just to earn rank quicker and overall, how you do this is standing out from your peers. So I'm going to share the gist of my bullets with you guys and my package with you guys and we'll kind of go over what that means. But obviously just watching this video or following the types of things that I did is not going to guarantee you to win. It totally depends on the other people that you're going up against. So if you're going up at the wing level or the group level or the squadron level, there's going to be multiple people who have strong packages, who are competing for this, and it's only about 15% of people that actually get this award. So when you are creating your package, it's going to maybe feel awkward or sound awkward to you because it's supposed to be bragging about yourself, basically, things that you've done, things that you have volunteered for, things you have accomplished. So if you're ready for more responsibility and more money and you want to possibly test for Staff Sergeant one cycle earlier, then I would consider going up for BTZ. Now there are some squadrons who put up all of their A1Cs or most of their A1Cs when it is their time to go up for this nomination and there are some squadrons, wings, or groups that may just send who they think is the most qualified. So keep in touch with your leadership. Um, make sure that you are tracking when you're coming up for nomination for BTZ. Ask your supervisor about it and all that good stuff. So now we are going to get into bullets and my overall package. I'm sorry if you guys can hear whatever is going on outside. Of course, the moment I finally sit down to film this video for you, there's someone out there cutting grass. So we're just gonna keep going with this. All right, so starting with bullets, you are going to be creating bullets with your supervisor. Sometimes your supervisor will even just do the whole thing for you and write your whole package as long as you tell them the details or the gist of what you've done. If you just send them a list of things, sometimes your supervisor will take care of this for you. But you might find yourself helping your supervisor write these bullets and you will have to learn how to do these sooner or later if you're going to be an NCO and have peers under you who you need to help write their packages. So obviously I am very new to writing bullets, but you do want to start them off with a strong verb. Anything that shows leadership is going to be the best to use. So for example, on mine, I had things at the top of the list that started with words like handpicked or overseas or things like that. So if you're overseeing something or you're leading something or you were selected for something, these are all great things to put at the top of your list. So following the strong verb, you want to make sure that you are including numbers that show impact or the quality of what you've done. So they like big numbers, they like big impact. You want to show that what you've done has made a difference either in your personal development, professional development, in the community, in the squadron, in the wing, in the group, in the flight. Anything that you've done to basically make a difference, they want to know how it made a difference, how big of a difference did you make. So I do have my Air Force Form 1206 pulled up here. I'm obviously not just going to post it because you guys gotta come up with your own bullets. You have to come up with your own accomplishments, but I am going to go over the different categories and what you could be working on now that might set you apart from other people that you're going up against for this award. Okay, so at the bottom of the form, there is a section called specific accomplishments. And within that, this is where your bullets are going to be listed. So the first category under specific accomplishments is primary duties. So under primary duties, this is where you want to list anything you've done within your specific AFSC that has made a difference. And I will give you a couple examples of things that I have put on here. Yes, I did put one bullet on here from tech school. So some people will say things you've done in tech school don't matter in the operational air force. And some people will say, yes, they do matter. As long as it's like a leadership thing, you can definitely use it. So 
that was my top bullet and that was not by my choice that was by my supervisor's choice she felt like that was my strongest thing to put on top so my first bullet basically talks about how i was handpicked to lead the very last block of my tech school so I was picked to lead this exercise. Um, my title was NCOIC. So basically I was picked by my instructors over 18 other peers. And that's kind of the summary of my first bullet. So another thing that I have under primary duties is a TDY that I took earlier in the year. And the course that I was sent to is typically for like higher enlisted or like NCOs, senior NCOs, officers, and I was one of two enlisted members in the course, so I definitely wanted to make sure I put that on there. So under primary duties, I do have seven bullets, and then moving on to the next category. The next category is base slash community involvement, and this is where you're going to want to put all of your volunteer hours. So under this category, I do have three bullets. So this is a place that is well known in our community. It's somewhere where they accept clothing donations, grocery items, uh, they serve meals to people for breakfast and lunch and so I was able to help organize clothing like bags of donations and we also got to serve meals to people and help clean up and highly recommend just getting involved in your community if you're looking for volunteer work to do. I'm sure there are always places like soup kitchens and things like that that you can get involved in. So like I said I had three bullets for base and community involvement and then underneath that is my last category where it says significant self-improvement. And under here is where you're going to want to list things like academic related. So for example, I have two bullets under here. One of them is about my CDPs. Uh, I completed them two months early. So CDPs are going to be very important to standing out on your BTZ package. You definitely want to make sure that you've completed them. You've completed them early and that you've scored very high on them. So this is something that is common in airmen. So you can't just say, I completed my CDPs because you're expected to, but if you've completed them a percentage early or you scored over 90%, that is something that is going to help you stand out. I did receive a 96% on the final and it says that I'm ahead of schedule for my five level upgrade. So something else that's going to help you also stand out amongst your peers is going to be CLEP testing or if you have finished your CCAF, which is your Community College of the Air Force degree. So as of right now, I am only three credits away from that degree, and I did take one CLEP test, and that was Principles of Supervision. So as most of you know, I did complete my associate's degree and my bachelor's degree before enlisting, so those credits did carry over and helped me significantly with my CCAF. So once I transferred those credits over, I only needed six credits to complete it. So those six credits, the category that they are in is called like supervision or management or something like that. So it recommended that I take the CLEP tests for principles of supervision and principles of management. So I did the first one and I did pass it the first time. I didn't study, I just walked in there and did it. And I also encouraged my friend to do that with me that day. And she passed too, and neither one of us studied. So that is my second bullet that I have under significant self-improvement. So if you are encouraging other airmen to also focus on academic or professional development, that is something important because you're already showing leadership qualities. You're already encouraging and inspiring other people to better themselves. So. That is the second bullet that I had under significant self-improvement. So I would have completed my CCAF by now. I did have my second CLEP test scheduled for May of this year, but because of everything going on, it did get canceled. These CLEP tests, if you're wondering what they are, they're college credits, essentially. College level examination program tests, that's what CLEP stands for, and they are free through the military. So highly recommend seeing which CLEP tests you can take. This way you don't have to take an entire college course. It is still worth the three credits, it's free. Recommend studying for the harder ones. The average passing rates for these tests are available online so you can see which ones are typically easier and which ones are typically harder for people. And that should help you determine how much you should study for these. So I think I pretty much covered everything in my BTZ package. One last piece of advice, do not wait until two months, one month, two weeks before your BTZ board to try to start doing things to get bullets. That's probably not gonna work. I don't think that's the best strategy, but 
that's just my opinion. So I really hope this video was helpful for those of you going up for BTZ. I wish you guys the very best of luck. And if you have any other questions for me, feel free to leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram at Brittany L. Willis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.